an issue for so many. And as local nonprofits think of new ways to maneuver price hikes, Arshan Delmanis stopped by some of them to hear more about their strategy to serve. As inflation tugs on East Texans' pockets, nonprofits still have people to serve. No one knocks on our door or rings our bell and goes away empty-handed. In a time when they're needed the most, East Texas Cares branches out for support themselves through grant funding and volunteers. Okay. Executive uh, Director Dr. Jeanette Calhoun describes the toughest parts of keeping the food bank doors open when inflation and shortages would rather seal them shut. I, I think the biggest problem has been poultry, you know, not poultry, but protein, you know, having the protein. Meat's been scarce in the grocery stores as well. Calhoun says this trickles down to the food bank and the people who rely on them. Kids at 20 schools in East Texas rely on the Mentoring Alliance. Ann Ferguson, Vice President of Program Development, says they're eager to serve as much as their resources allow. Um, really, truly, the bulk of our expense is rooted in our staff. Finding enough hires is one hurdle. Paying competitive wages is another, and now soaring gas prices. We have five area directors here in Tyler who oversee um, four or five after school sites each, and so they drive around quite a bit every single day trying to go to the different sites. To compensate, their board of directors increased funding so staff could get around without draining their pockets. As both nonprofits look forward to the days when the pandemic's lingering effects are behind them, they get creative and renew their grit to serve by any means necessary. In Tyler, Shondell Moniz, CBS 19. Those price increases are affecting your wallet, too. In fact, East Texans that paid their Swepco electric bill this month might have noticed a price increase. Our Mariah Kondav spoke with the company to learn more. Hey, Aaron, yeah, this year.